Good afternoon. I'd like to call to order the uh, October 5th meeting of the Oklahoma City Metropolitan Area Public Schools Trust. Order, first order of business is to approve the minutes of the September 14th and 28th, 2010 meetings of this trust. And I would recognize a motion to that effect. Then moves are second. You can second. I'll second. We'll vote. You can go ahead and leave it, leave it on. I think we can turn it on and off that way. I see. Okay, we have um, two reports. First, we'd like to approve the preliminary report for the Independence Charter Middle School. Mr. Carlton. Mr. Chairman, the uh, Independence Charter Middle School is at 32. Sorry, Independence Charter School is at 3232 Northwest 65th. Uh, at the current time, the project meets all the design requirements. The estimated cost is 71,000 at, at this stage over the uh, program budget, and the main reason is the fire suppression system. Uh, upon approval, the architect will be authorized to develop the final plans and specifications. Uh, David, I mean, I'm sorry, Bruce uh, Bacchus is here for a presentation uh, on the preliminary report. Um, thank you for having us. It's a beautiful day. I wish we were meeting outside, but uh, this will do. Um, the school was built in the 50s, and I started school there in the fall of 59 as a Burbank bumblebee, so it's been a blast working on the school. I graduated uh, from the sixth grade like Jethro Bodine. I'm quite proud of it. Um, we're adding on 11,800 square feet. The addition will uh, accommodate a new media center, restrooms and locker rooms for the gymnasium, coach's office, and storage. It's about 11,800 square feet. The renovation is going to take care of the administration, administration area, uh, bring it up to the MAP standards. Uh, we're adding a new northwest entry to face independence. Um, the main entry will be towards its namesake, independence, um, and it helps the, helps the school function better uh, with regard to the uh, carpool lines. Um, we're creating a space out of the existing boiler room um, so we can get the food service lines out of the multipurpose room. Uh, fire sprinkler system has been uh, mentioned, and then cosmetic improvements. Um, asbestos abatement, and um, we're creating a classroom out of what is currently a stage and upgrading the ADA, to, uh, the restrooms to be ADA compliant. The side upgrades are primarily on the west side um, where we are making the new entry. We're going to add landscaping to the west side and just make it a lot more attractive. Right now, 90% of the people that come to the building enter what looks through a it looks like a back door, and we're going to create a new entry and improve the look of it toward independence. Uh, there's some sidewalk repairs, and we will uh, complete the outside work with an accessible route to the existing track. Aerial photo um, site plan showing on the west side the improvements, the landscape in green. Um, on the southeast corner is the new gymnasium, and it'll have its independent entry <clears throat> so the school can operate um, beyond its school hours, and the gym and the media center can stand alone as uh, independent um, operations. Close up on the plan, um, the darkest color are, are the additions. Um, I don't know if you want anything specific on that. This is uh, the room finishes, and we brought the actual boards because they show better. Um, Could you turn them towards the horseshoe? Thanks. And we can, you can see the actual because the photos don't do them justice. A couple of 3D models on the outside showing the new gymnasium and the improvements to the west side. It's the new entry, new entry to the gymnasium. 
Um, it's been mentioned that we're $71,000 over budget, primarily because of the um, sprinkler system. In addition, the asbestos abatement number is a lot higher than the zero that was programmed. We still plan on bidding it out in February with uh, construction beginning in March with a completion of June of 2012. We appreciate any questions you might have. Are there any questions? Anthony? Uh, you mentioned asbestos abatement as required. Does that mean that you'll only abate the asbestos in areas that would have to be disturbed or just in general? That does mean exactly that. Some places the asbestos is already encapsulated and contained inside heating units um, and in other maps jobs they've just built like a cabinet face around the heating unit and not pulled out the asbestos because that was a lesser expensive thing to do. If we can afford it as we get closer to bidding it we would love to pull the heaters out and get rid of the asbestos and put a cabinet in there that is functional. Um, but right now it doesn't look like we have the money to do that, so it would just be encapsulating some of the asbestos. The asbestos in the boiler room um, that we're going to change into a, a kitchen area or a serving line, that will all be abated and removed. The uh, floor tiles that have asbestos in them will be uh, removed. So we're removing anything that anybody would have contact with. There's a plaster ceiling with asbestos in it. We're removing all the plaster ceilings. and putting in a, an, an acoustical grid ceiling uh, to take its place, and it'll make changes in the future a lot easier to make. Is there any um, disruption to classes during construction? One of the great things about the design of this school is that it has, every classroom has an exterior door and an interior door, so we're going to be able to have construction access the school from outside and the students can still operate inside and we'll be able to, and depending on their scheduling, we'll be able to um, do two classrooms at a time so they can always keep it up and running. And uh, the school is working on that scheduling to know exactly how many classrooms they can turn over at one time and how quickly we can get the media center and gymnasium built so we can put our new classrooms in there and use those spaces while we're doing um, to work on the existing spaces. Other questions? One more. Oh, um, I'm sorry. During the uh, community meeting, which I attended as an interested trust member and as a parent, yeah. uh, I, there was a discussion about the parking spaces that will be lost to the gym, and could you just talk about how many spaces will be lost as a kind of ratio to the total? It's, it's kind of hard to say exactly because the striping in that area is virtually non-existent to actually do a count of. Um, I'll, I'm going to have to get back to you on that to give you an exact figure because I don't have it. It's a good question, um, but I don't know the answer. But it, it looks like, based on your uh, site plan, that you've got a number of parking spaces. Yeah, this, this program they will be outside the gymnasium area. Yeah, I'm going to flip back to the, where am I, why do I need to point to? It's kind of on our page three. I don't know. What yeah, is. if I can get back to the site plan. With the, for a middle school, this has a, one more slide would be great. There we go. Yeah. For a middle school, the parking that we're suggesting here, and part of it's painted there, but the, the, the gym area parking, there's, I don't know when the last time they painted stripes on it, but the last time I checked it, it was really difficult to discern how it was striped. Um, what I can do is give you, um, and I'll get it to you, the existing parking total if it were laid out the same way this is laid out and tell you how many we've lost, and I'll be glad to do that. Thank you. Other questions? Is that, uh, you asked no. the question because it's a concern. Yeah, the, the community meeting was another outstanding example of the job they're doing there. There's probably 300 people there. And, wow. and of that 300, I bet 50 of them were former students that are from early teens to in their mid-20s that just came back to hug their principal and, and hang out and see what was happening. I mean, it's mind-boggling. They, they love the place, and it's, it's awesome what they're doing. It's very impressive. How about, um, Bruce, you mentioned the windows as an alternate 
How bad are the windows? How important is that in your estimation? Um, the windows are circa 1955, and they're single pane, aluminum framed, non thermally broken. They are as energy inefficient as anything you could put in the wall. All right. Um, the new windows would be a thermally broken frame, which means that cold can't transfer directly through it and be double pane windows. So it would make it quieter and more energy efficient. Okay. We'll get a chance to look at that number and you all can decide whether yeah. you think it's right. worth it. Yeah. Other questions? Just one on the uh, projected schedule. We're a few months behind. Are we, is there anticipation that we would catch up on that schedule to be done by June 2012? Um, we're behind uh, in the approval process. We're not behind in the drawing process. We so could, we could still make up that time? Then. That's right. Okay. Thanks for asking. Other questions? I'd recognize a motion to approve this preliminary report. I'll make the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Oops, I forgot to do that. Sorry. Thank you. Hmm? You just leave it off. Next, we're being asked to approve the preliminary report for West Nichols Hills Elementary School Project ES-56. Mr. Chairman, uh, the West Nichols Hills project at this point in the, at the preliminary report stage meets all the design requirements. The cost estimate is approximately $50,000 over the construction budget, uh, mainly because of the addition of a new drop-off lane. Uh, and David Hornbeek is here to uh, give a presentation on the report. Thank you. Yes, I'm David Hornbeek with Hornbeek Blatt Architects, and uh, I brought with us the project architect on this uh, um, particular school. Uh, so if you ask me a question that I can't answer, then I'm sure Aaron Smith will be able to answer it for us. Um, the scope of work on this project hasn't changed since we reported to you on the schematic. It's still uh, to accommodate uh, the school, to accommodate 344 students. We're going to provide uh, additions to the school in total of 9,600 9, square feet. We'll have four new classrooms, a special needs classroom, uh, new ADA restrooms. Um, we're going to renovate the kitchen. We're going to double the size of the kitchen and build a new cafeteria expansion. The existing school is 34,000 square feet and will include uh, uh, changes in classrooms, special need. In fact, we're going to relocate where the administration area is. We're going to relocate where the media services are and uh, uh, upgrade all of those. Repair and modernization include the items that we show on this list. I'm not going to go through them, read them individually. And out. Exterior on the site, we will have new fencing, new landscaping, uh, sidewalks and ADA ramps, and uh, uh, new paving. And that paving includes a new drop-off to try to access the, uh, the front entry as it's supposed to be uh, utilized. This is an aerial photograph of the existing school. And north is, uh, is to the left. Uh, the front of the school faces the intersection of Greystone and Coventry. And we're proposing to bring in a new drop-off on Coventry Lane uh, and uh, bring it in front of the, the uh, front door so that students can um, be dropped off by parents and we can try to eliminate some of the congestion that occurs on both Coventry and Greystone uh, before and after school. And the uh, 12 portable classrooms that are at the top of the photograph uh, will be uh, completely gone when we're uh, complete. Here's uh, our preliminary site plan. You can see the new uh, drop off is proposed uh, coming off of Coventry Lane and uh, this is modified slightly from what we showed you in the schematic design because before it was it, it entered and the cars would enter from Coventry uh, coming from the east and after uh, several numerous discussions with neighbors in that, in that uh, school district, 
Well, now uh, we've made it uh, with a 90-degree entry, and the cars will actually come from Greystone and uh, Guilford and make a left turn into that entry. Uh, the new classrooms you can see are at the top, and our proposal here allows us to build like 90% of that facility before we knock the wall down between that and connect it to the existing school. And then uh, the blue area at the bottom is the area that we're proposing to uh, build a new cafeteria and double the size of the existing kitchen. Here's the traffic flow that we came up with. Um, Within a half a block of this school is also a private school, um, a Catholic school, and we met with a traffic engineer with that, from that that is working on that school's problem, and we came up with a solution that worked with what they were uh, proposing and what we have, and we've even presented this to the uh, neighbors. Uh, we think this is the best solution that we can uh, achieve, and I think the neighbors were happy with the efforts that we made. Can I ask that uh, where you have, let's, you know, they've turned into the entrance there. Yes, sir. And you have traffic going in both directions in that driveway sort of thing. No, in, in the driveway there's not two-way traffic. All so that is the street? That's a street, yes, sir. Uh, that's Coventry Lane. That's that Coventry. is a street. Okay. What would stop a child from getting out while they're, while they're in line? waiting to make that U-turn? Well, um, the oh, blue line is the entry area, and, the, and the, we, we tried to show how many cars could potentially stack up in both areas. Um, what would stop it is that a parent wouldn't let them out there, uh, and we're not going to encourage parents to let them out there because that's actually going to be uh, adjacent to the new um, Catholic school on that side. School is to the is to the south. South north is to the left. You can see there's a dark uh, triangle at the very bottom of that image that points north. North is yeah, not truly that. to the yeah. left. It's kind of uh, okay. The um, so south that way. Yeah. South of the National yeah. Christian Church is at the Catholic Church just north. Yeah, but came. they've also got the other school that's down a block on the other side to the east. So yeah. you got two issues there. And I know that's been a big got, concern for. Plans for Greystone. That's going to be I know a big traffic issue. And that's the reason that I know the city of Nichols Hills was very interested in dealing with this traffic. David and this. Big deal. We've met with the, the, the previous mayor and the new mayor and, and gone through this along with uh, the, the neighbors most directly affected. Some of them have, uh, I mean, might even be considered public uh, uh, notoriety. And I think we've, we've really done our best efforts to, to listen to their concerns and, 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 and deal with this traffic as well as we can. And by pulling the cars off of the street, we're, we, we're going to be able to almost quadruple the amount of cars that can pull off the street now than we previously had. I think and, you've done a better job than I thought you could do. I mean, I was, I was contacted as well. And thank you very much, Mr. Edwards. Anyway, the, 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 the biggest negative to this solution was the fact that we'll have to cut down a tree that's probably about 30 or 40 years old, but uh, in light of what uh, all of the positives and the, the things that we could accomplish, we thought it was a, uh, a worthwhile trade-off, and we'll plant a new tree to grow for another 30 or 40 years. Um, I went uh, pass this up. This is an uh, enlarged plan, and it also shows some of the changes that will occur internally. All of the light green areas and the um, kind of the mango or, or orange areas are, are renovations to existing things in the school. These are the elevations. The, uh, the top elevation is uh, looking from the north at the new addition to the uh, cafeteria. And the west elevation is looking from the west at the new addition to the cafeteria. That's, that was the one that was on the uh, lowest portion of the plan. And then this is the classroom addition and what it will look like uh, beside the existing school. The south elevation is looking south towards Greystone. And the east elevation is uh, uh, what, uh, well, it really doesn't face the street, but what the majority of the classroom addition. And we're endeavoring to try to 
be consistent with the existing school and make it look uh, copacetic with the, the uh, existing design. These are a couple of perspectives. And then um, this is our interior color board. We went over that with the principal and the staff. Principal Anderson had a committee of people to look at this, and uh, we, we've tried to match some of the colors that were already in the existing school and use school colors, not bright colors, but uh, muted. Our uh, current budget is, uh, as was pointed out earlier in the introduction, about $50,000 over. Um, and the majority of that cost is in the new drop-off lane. Maybe you can get the city of Nichols Hills to pay for that. I'm sorry? I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> Maybe you can get the city of Nichols Hills to pay for it since they were so interested. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you carry that water. <laughs> uh, project schedule. This is updated where we are today, and, and uh, we expect if you give us approval, we'll get the construction documents done in uh, approximately 90 days and go out to bid, and we'll have this thing um, occupiable in uh, approximately uh, April of 2012. Any questions? Is there a motion for approval? Move approval. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. We'll vote. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Next item is we're being asked to approve the final plans and specifications for Project ES-50, Eugene Field Elementary School, and authorize the Secretary to advertise for bids to be received November 2nd, 2010. Mr. Chairman, the uh, final plans for Eugene Field, this is a is a rebid. As you probably recall, it came in substantially over budget the first time we bid. I think about seven to eight hundred thousand. Uh, there has been uh, a redesign, primarily of the mechanical building, mechanical systems, and the, the architect's cost estimate is now within the budget. And uh, Scott, Scott Parker is here to give a presentation and answer your questions. Hi, I'm Scott Parker from Tap Architecture give you a, a brief presentation on the Eugene Field Elementary. Um, give you an overview of the construction documents that we've gone through so far and see if there are any questions. Generally speaking, just for a review, this school is at 1515 North Klein. Uh, it is unique in the fact that it was a, an underground design, a bermed school, uh, and it was leaking. And that was a big problem. So an early bid package was issued to replace or replace and repair the roof on this building. That is complete at this point. The remainder of the project is a remodel project. There's no addition to this school. Uh, it is all interior remodel, total of 64,000 square feet or just under. Um, so on the exterior, we are doing a few things. I'll show some graphics later, uh, including a, an ADA ramp to the playground, which doesn't currently, currently exist. Uh, we're doing some landscaping and new fencing. And on the interior, we are doing remodel of, of surfaces generally to improve the aesthetic of the space and replace the ceiling tiles, which were damaged due to the leaking roof. On the site plan, uh, you can see where we are modifying um, a ramp at the back of the school, exiting out of the lower level, and adding a ramp at the playground, which is the main level of the school, so that we can allow a student who's uh, wheelchair bound to have access to that. Um, we're also doing some modification to the ADA parking in the front of the school. On the exterior we're doing very little as I said again we are adding five new windows and we lowered the level of dirt around the school. In the floor plan uh, shown in blue are classroom locations. Generally speaking these are existing except for these classrooms on the left, uh, which we've taken the existing cafeteria, made classrooms out of it. We've taken the gymnasium space, shown here, and made it the new cafeteria space. Part of those new windows, or nearly all of those new windows, uh, give light into the cafeteria space, which is a two-story volume space, uh, adding light that never was there 
before, so it's a great improvement. Um, unique to this school also, it is the only two-story Oklahoma City school that does not have a, um, an elevator. So we wanted to remove, it had in its place a ramp. So we uh, are demoing the ramp, adding an elevator and stair to improve circulation through the school. Uh, I wanted to highlight a few areas that we're doing. These are a couple of requests specifically from the uh, teachers. Added security at the front office. The difficulty previously was seeing uh, this door, which was a, really a security checkpoint into the school. Uh, we minimized some of the structure in this area, and now they have a clearer view through uh, to, to that door opening. This is a close-up view of the um, new elevator, new stair. The ramp would have been taking up this whole area. Uh, additionally, the ramp, I forgot to mention, gave us essentially 600 square feet of usable space that we did not have before. We were able to use that for the art room. This is the second floor of Eugene Field. Uh, again, in blue are the classrooms. They are generally in the same location as before. And we merely are remodeling, refinishing, resurfacing those. The media center also stays in its same location, but it has been uh, enlarged slightly and, and updated, uh, raised the ceiling in that area. Uh, we also renovated four uh, restroom quadrants in each quad there, uh, which were not uh, large enough to be ADA accessible previously. The current or the project budget total is 3.98 million. The roof project was 598,000, leaving 3 million 382. Uh, currently, the estimated remodel project cost is at 3.213 million, with uh, or not counting the proposed add alternates for serving line replacement in the kitchen, um, classroom cubbies, classroom sinks and primary duct insulation. These are, of course, they would be nice, but they're not required for the project. Uh, as I said, the roof has already bid, and it is complete. Uh, the remodel project is, with your approval, will bid November the 2nd, 2010. Uh, construction will then begin and conclude March 2012. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Questions? I do have questions. Um, this project was originally, I think I heard, overbid. Uh, we had bids to come in significantly high, and we reduced that by reworking what we're doing in mechanical. Is that correct? Um, can you that explain is that correct. Bit? Can you um, explain that a little bit more to me? I, I will. What we tried to do, we fully believed that we could fully rehabilitate the uh, air conditioning system and do that in such a way that is more sustainable and, and used less energy ultimately. Um, what occurred, however, is that the design was too invasive and we did not accurately predict what that would take. There was a lot of work that had to be done inside every classroom to make that possible, um, causing additional complication because uh, unlike a school that has doors out of the classrooms, we have dirt and so we don't have an ability to separate those. It just caused cost problems. The new modification for the mechanical system actually has uh, no or nearly no interior work. We're changing out the rooftop units only and modifying it enough to uh, do a very a good remodel but not a full replacement. And therefore you don't, you don't think you're going to have to replace the duct work then? That is correct, yes. Okay. But the the ductwork insulation ad that you saw as an mm -hmm. ad alternate, that is a suggestion from our mechanical engineer uh, who says that uh, given that the project is from 1985 and that there has been some leakage potentially, um, that there could be deterioration of that insulation. Uh, this would be a wholesale replacement of insulation. We anticipate and have added into our base bid a, um, enough money to cover a certain amount. I believe it was about 800 square feet of insulation. That's in the base bid. Uh, the total amount is 8,000 square feet. So we would check it out with the contractor, presumably, identify certain areas that require replacement. And if no further replacement is needed, we would not require that ad alternate. 
Other questions? So you feel this uh, change doesn't affect the building's quality? The building's quality? The uh, change with the uh, air conditioning? No, no, it won't affect the quality of air. We still meet the, uh, the updated outside air requirements for the HVAC system. We meet all of those. Uh, it's just not quite as efficient of a system. Okay. So you're trying to, you were trying to improve the sustainability and the efficiency, and it but it would turn out to be too expensive. That is correct. So you, re you reworked that. What are um, cubbies again? Class word. Uh, what are storage just compartments. They're 116,000. Yes, they're. Seems they like a high number. Came out to be quite high. Uh, and the other thing was um, no elevator. It's an unusual building, is it not? It was unusual to not have an elevator. They thought the ramp would do it. Of course, it does function well, but generally speaking, it's um, it, it's too steep for children. Yeah. There is a little bit of a modification of, of the ADA for K through five, which so, this, of course, is. So everybody's going to have to ride the elevator, or is there? A... No, everybody will take the stair generally. The stairs and the, okay. Yeah. The stairs the easiest way. The elevator uh, is in, and we planned it this way. I might have mentioned that we, uh, you can see the elevator from the main office. So there's a control there, plus Dr. House um, has really good control of the students in that school. And when he says don't use the elevator, they will not use the elevator. Just for special needs students. For special needs yeah. students, that's my point. Yeah, there's still stairs. Right. Are there other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd recognize a motion to approve the final plan and specifications for Eugene Fields Elementary School. So it's been moved and seconded. Second. Sure. We'll vote. Thank you. We now have six change orders, which I'm going to ask Mark in uh, Eric Winger's absence to give us the, the brief input, input on each one, and then we will vote on them. Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Change order number five for Chavez Elementary is an increase of $25,948.62. The facility is approximately 70% complete. There are four items on the change order, uh, no delay days. Uh, this will bring the total change order percentage to 3.37% on this school. Change order number two for Edwards Elementary School is an increase of $38,293. The school is 90% complete. There's only one item. This is the driveway revision that we've spoken of before uh, for 38, the $38,293. Brings the total change order percentage to 2.54% and adds 58 days for a November 1 completion date. Change order number three for Fillmore Elementary is an increase of $30,222. Skill is 50% complete. Change order includes six items and an addition of 20 days. This brings the total change order percentage to 1.28%. Change, um, <coughs> change order number four. For Lee Elementary is an increase of $17,094.97. It is 70% complete, 12 items, no time delay on the project. Change order number two for Linwood Elementary School is an increase of $35,412. Ten days delay brings the, uh, or ten additional days, brings the uh, total change order percentage to 2.34%. There are nine items, none of them particularly large.
Change order number two for Southeast High School is $45,750, 75% complete. There are 11 items. Brings the total change order to 1.82%. Completion date is April 2011. And on this item, last night the school board had questions or took exception to item number eight. We are uh, attempting to get additional information to the school board on that for their next meeting. We would ask that this be that this change order also be approved with the exception of item number eight, and then they will bring number eight back to you at the next meeting. Very good. We uh, staff recommends approval of all change orders. Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I would recognize a motion that we approve all the all the change orders with the exception of item number eight on change order number or letter F. Move approval. Then moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed by like sign. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Couch is tied up in another meeting today, and Mr. Winger is. Uh, Ill, are there any other comments from your standpoint? We have really, really nothing new to add since last week's meeting, except that we will have a photo update that was initially scheduled for this meeting. We'll have it next meeting. Are there any comments by trustees? Staff? Citizens? Thank you. We're adjourned.